So now it's chain rule time. I've got a few introductory examples to help get used to using the chain rule. So I'm going to start here with this sine of pi x over 2. With each of these, um, the key is going to be to start with a little bit of rewriting of the original function. In this case, um, let's look at this as sine of, so this pi x over 2, you want to read that as you've got this constant coefficient pi over 2 times x. All right, now when you use the chain rule, and first of all, when to use the chain rule, you, as opposed to product rule, I should say. So the reason I'm gonna, I need to use chain rule here and not product rule is because um, the, the pi x over two is inside of the sine function. When you just write sin by itself, that, that's nothing. That's just an operation. It's like writing a square root with nothing underneath. So the SIN by itself is not an actual, it's not an expression, it's just an operation. Um, so the parentheses here, whatever's in the parentheses is inside of the sine function. It's, it's like when you write f of x and it's the x is being plugged into the function f. The SIN is just the name of that function. And whatever you put here, so like in this case pi x over 2, is being plugged into that SIN, the sine function. Again, the SIN is just the name of the function. All right, no going on, going on about that, but it's a common mistake for Cal 1 students. Okay, so we've got this inside function is the pi x over 2. This is the inside. And the outer function, or let me put inner instead of inside. So the inner function is the pi x over 2 and the outer function is the sine function. And it's important to distinguish what's inside and what's outside when you use the chain rule. All right, so in taking the derivative, I always talk about it like you're peeling layers of an onion. You, you take the derivative of the outermost function first. So we need to peel off the outer layer, which is the sine function. Take the derivative of that first. So derivative of sine is cosine. Leave the inside alone. So leave the pi over 2 times x alone. OK, now multiply by the derivative of the inside. And this is why I wanted to, instead of writing it as pi x over 2, I wanted to write it as pi over 2 times x, because that's what this represents. It's a constant times x. So derivative of the inside, if you have a number times x, derivative of the inside is just that, that number, that multiple, so pi over 2. So here we've got the derivative of the outside. You leave the inside alone. Now I'm writing small. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. So here you leave the inside alone at first. And then times the derivative of the inside. Now I would clean this up. I would probably, if you have a constant multiple, it's probably best to write that in front. And then cosine of, we could switch this back to the pi x over 2. That does look a little nicer written that way. But so here's your derivative using the um, chain rule. Derivative of the outer function, leave the inside alone, times derivative of the inside. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to that example b. Again with b... We want to begin by rewriting. So we have g of t is equal to negative 3 over t minus 2 to the fourth. That can be written as negative 3 times t minus 2 to the negative 4. We can bring that up rather than use, uh, say, the quotient rule on that. This would be the better way to go. So now, when we take the derivative, 
I may actually rewrite this. I like to color code the layers here. So the t minus 2 is our inner function. This is inside. And the negative fourth power is our outer function. So let me rewrite this as negative 3. I just want to use some color coding here. We've got this thing to the negative 4 power. And what's inside is t minus 2. OK, that's equal to the original function. When you have one function inside of another function, that's when you use the chain rule. OK, so the negative 3 is just a constant coefficient. That thing just sits there. And then you take the derivative of the outside first. So the outermost layer here is this negative 4 power. So you would bring the negative 4 down, leave the inside alone, subtract 1 from the exponent. Be careful with these negative exponents. So negative 4 minus 1, that's going to be negative 5 now. Leave the inside alone, t minus 2. Then you multiply by derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside, well, if it's just variable by itself, derivative is 1 minus derivative of a constant is 0. So the derivative of the inside here is just 1. And then we just do a little bit of, of cleaning up. So negative 3 times negative 4, that's positive 12. This thing's to the negative 5 power, so we can move that down to the denominator, make it positive 5 power, t minus 2. All right, and so there's your derivative for that second function, b, using the chain rule. OK, now with example c, we're going to have to use the product rule for one thing, because you've got one function times another function. So it's going to involve the product rule. It's going to involve the chain rule when we differentiate this, because you've got one function inside of another function. You've got the square root function on the outside, and then this whole other expression 16 minus x squared inside that also needs to be differentiated. So within this derivative, we're going to have to apply the chain rule. And then it's also going to take some effort to simplify. So this example C is going to take us quite a bit longer, I, I think. All right, let me write that function over here. And I might as well erase this now, too. We're not going to need that, but I want to keep the instructions that I've written there. All right, so our function here. Let me use the color coding that I set up there. So we've got this 1 half x squared expression times square root of 16 minus x squared. So I'm going to write that as 16 minus x squared to the 1 half. Just go ahead and change that, that radical to a, a exponent so we can apply the uh, power rule when we differentiate that. OK. So taking the derivative using the product rule, Let's do the easy part first. So take the derivative of 1 half x squared. The 1 half is just a constant coefficient. And then with the derivative of x squared, it's just the 2 comes down, x to the take 1 away. So now it's x to the first. That's great. Leave the second part alone. OK, now this is going to have to go. OK, so I took the derivative of the first part, left the second part alone. We're applying the product rule here. So now I need plus, leave this alone, 1 half x squared. Take the derivative of this. OK, and as we take the derivative of this, this is when we're going to need, well, I'll write it over here, the chain rule. So applying the chain rule here. Ignore everything else now. We're just focused on taking the derivative of this. Outside function, the outer layer to this is the 1 half power. So that's what we need to differentiate first. The 1 half comes down, leave the inside alone, subtract 1 from that exponent. So 1 half minus 1 gives us negative 1 half. Leave the inside alone. 
16 minus x squared. And let me move this over because I'm going to need a little more room anyway. Okay, that's the derivative of the outer layer of this. Now we need to take the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the inside of this will be 0 minus, here the 2 comes down x to the first. So it's going to be 0 minus 2x to the first when you apply the um, power rule here. Okay, and now we've worked our way all the way across. Now we just got to simplify. We've, we've applied the product rule and the chain rule. We took the derivative of the first part, left the second part alone, plus now we left the first part alone, took the derivative of the second part using the chain rule. So the uh, cleaning this up, let's see, we have 1 half times 2, so that cancels, x to the first, square root of 16 minus x squared. Okay, multiplying this out, this is going to be a little bit of work, like I said. Um, let's just see. So it's going to be a fraction because I see negative exponents. Um, 1 over 2, I'm going to write it like this. Maybe I'll keep the same color to help keep track of what's going on. So we've got 1 over 2, x squared, so that's going to go in the numerator. And then another 1 over 2. So 1 over 2. And then this to the negative 1 half. So that's going to be a square root of 16 minus x squared in the denominator, because of that negative 1 half power. And then this is negative 2x. So I'm going to put that up here, times negative 2x. Okay, so numerator is 1 times x squared times 1 times negative 2x. That's what I have here. Denominator is 2 times 2 times the square root of 16 minus x squared. Um, so if I clean that up, Uh, well, I'm writing plus, but then we should go ahead and move this negative to the front here. So this will be minus. Okay, denominator, we have 2 times 2, so that's 4 square root of 16 minus x squared. Numerator, we have x squared. To, okay, the negative already moved to the front, so 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. x to the first times x squared. Okay. Now we need, well, okay, a couple of things. We need to get a common denominator. But notice here we have uh, 2 over 4, so that reduces to 1 over 2. So this denominator is actually, let's treat it as 2 times the square root of 16 minus x squared. If I want to combine these, I need to get a common denominator. So let's say I want to combine this as one big fraction denominator is 2 square root of 16 minus x squared. Okay, then right now, let's say this is over 1. I need to make this denominator match, so I need to multiply top and bottom by 2 square root of 16 minus x squared. So multiply here by 2 square root of 16 minus x squared. Okay, this already has the denominator that we want. So when I multiply this out, I'll have 2 times x. Let's see. I'm going to need, well, I could try to use the, well, there's that glare. Okay, I'm going to move up here. Okay, so moving up to here. Let's see. So like I said, one big fraction, the denominator is going to be 2 square root of 16 minus x squared. Multiplying this out, I'm going to multiply 2 times x, so that's 2x. Square root of 16 minus x squared times itself, that'll get rid of the square root, so it'll just be 16 minus x squared to the first, because it's like to the 1 half and then times the same thing to the 1 half power, now it's to the first power. Okay, and I've got the 2x in front, so I'm done with this part, minus x cubed from this part over here. The 2 canceled and made this denominator 2. 
All right, so now we're almost there. Worst part's over. Distribute the 2x, combine like terms. That's what's left to be done. So if we distribute 2x, 2x times 16, so that's 32x, minus 2x times x squared, so that's 2x cubed. And then we still have this minus x cubed over here. So combining those, oops, and this is over, sorry, 2 square root of 16 minus x squared. Okay, so combining like terms in the numerator, we'd have 32x minus 2x cubed minus another x cubed, so that's minus 3x cubed over 2 square root of 16 minus x squared. Okay, yep, that one was quite a bit more more work. Let me block the glare again. Um, but there's our nice fully simplified solution. If if your problem says differentiate but it doesn't specifically tell you to simplify, then we could have stopped at like the third line that we wrote after we did the product rule and the chain rule. Most of the effort in this example was spent on the simplifying, um, getting this written as a single ratio, getting that common denominator and all of that.